Hi there, my name is Doug Hills, and this is the Manga Studio Guide. Now, on today's episode, I'd like to update everyone on how the exporting and printing functions work within the program. Now, when I made the tutorial video for Smith Micro initially, it was done with version 5.0 of the program. Now, there have been a few version updates since then, and with that came a few changes to how Manga Studio functions, including the various ways exporting and printing is performed. So I'm going to go over how to export and print with the most recent version update, 5.0.4, and help alleviate any confusion new users may have. So I have my completed page here, and I'm ready to export it to a different format. And I have three ways that I can do that. The first option is to simply use the Save As function located in the main menu under File, Save As. And this brings up the Save As dialog box. All we do here is enter the name of the file and select the file type that I want to save it as. I can choose Manga Studio, the native format, Bitmap, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, Targa, Photoshop, Big, and Photoshop. Now Photoshop Big, are for pages that are larger than 30,000 pixels wide and or tall. So if you have a really, really, really high resolution image and you want to save it as a Photoshop document, you want to save it as a Photoshop big document. Just select the option you want. Let's say JPEG. I've navigated to the place I want to save it as and I press save and that's it. There are no additional settings or dialog boxes to worry about. If I need to just save my page in a different format, this is about as simple as it gets. Now, if I want to have a little more control over how this image is saved, I will want to use one of the two export functions that the program provides. To maintain any layers on the page, I would use the Layered Export function located in the main menu under File, Export Layered. I have the option to save it as a mangastudio.lip file, an optimized.lip file, which just reduces the size of the file a little bit, a Layered Photoshop Big, or Layered Photoshop Document. From here, you get the same Save As dialog box, navigate to the place you would want to save your file as, enter the name of your file, and press save. Now I should note one thing for those of you wanting to export a layered Photoshop file. Not all of your Manga Studio specific features will export along with it. Ruler layers will go away, and any panels, vector layers, and word balloons and text will be rasterized. So if you want to retain any of these features, you will need to export to a .lip file. And finally, if you want to create a basic single layer image file, you'll want to use the export to a single layer option located on the main menu under File, Export Single Layer. Now the same image formats to choose from as Save As, Bitmap, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, Targa, and the two Photoshop documents. Make my selection, I'll select JPEG, and I get the same Save As dialog box. Enter the name, choose your location, choose your file type if you've changed your mind, and press Save. Now this time around, a new dialog box will appear containing your export settings. With one exception, which I'll explain in a moment, the settings you see here are the same for all image formats. If I want to preview the image before I export, I would check the preview rendering checkbox here. This option is exclusive to JPEG, and this sets up the quality of the, the final image. Now I can set the quality percentage by either entering a, in a value in the text box here or using the slider and adjusting the value. Now, there is a give and take to image size versus image quality. If you reduce the, the quality, you'll have a much smaller image size, but the quality of the image will be affected. Likewise, you can pick a high quality image, but then the file size will be larger. So you would want to find a nice sweet spot. These checkboxes allow me to select the, what parts of the page I want to export. I can choose to include any draft layers, crop marks, if I were exporting the page and then sending it to a printing company, the default border or safe area, text and word balloons, and if you were using Manga Studio EX, you could include story information and folio information. I can choose my expression color, RGB, gray, duotone, CMYK, or have it auto detect. I can choose to embed the ICC profile, which is a color profile for RGB or CMYK expression colors only. And if I wanted to tweak the color settings a bit more, I would click the advanced color settings button. I can choose the color of the crop mark and default border to either be the display color, cyan, or black. And I can set how any of the screen tone layers on the page are rendered. I can have the tone dots scaled relative to the final export size, or I can have them locked to the settings defined in the tone layer, which means that they will render at their original size and number of lines regardless of the size of the final image. This could result in dots being much larger than the line work, so keep that in mind. And finally, the enable tone effect for layer sets up how the tones are treated, whether or not you want them exported looking like screen tones, or if you uncheck this, if you want them just to be converted into solid grays. And next up, I can set up the size or scale ratio of the page, either by percentage, by either entering a value manually in the text box or using the slider here, or I can specify an output size by checking this radio button and entering in a width and height 
according to whatever unit of measurement I would like. Right now I have it set to inches, but I can easily change it to centimeters, millimeters, pixels, or points. And I should note that the aspect ratio will remain the same, so if I change the width, the height will automatically adjust accordingly. The final section here sets up the process when scaling your image down. For illustration, basically flattens the image before scaling it down to your specified size. Selecting for comic scales each layer down individually. And finally, you can set whether or not you want to have a quality rasterization or a quick rasterization. I'm happy with these settings. I press OK. And because I checked the preview checkbox, I get this preview window here. If you notice, it's not a quite at 100%, so it may look a little funny. So to double check, you can always scale in to 100% and see how the final image looks. If it looks good, you press OK. If you're not happy with how it looks, press Cancel make and make your adjustments to the, the export settings however you'd like. Then it's time to use the printing process. So located here on the main menu under File, Print Settings. Print will be what you'll use if you have all your settings all set up, but since we don't, we actually want to come to Print Settings first. The print settings dialog box is fairly similar to the single layer export settings that we just went over. The preview checkbox lets you preview the image before printing. The print size drop down list helps you set how the page is scaled on the paper. You click on the drop down list and you can set how the page is scaled. You can choose to print according to the dimensions you set for the page, inches, centimeters, etc. The size of the page in pixels, you can scale it up or down according to the paper. And if you're using Mongo Studio EX, you can choose to print a dual page or two pages, uh, your two page spread onto a single sheet of paper. If you want the page printed sideways relative to the paper, you can check the rotate paper checkbox here. You can select the items you want printed along with the artwork, draft layers, text, same things you saw on the export single layer dialog box. If you're using Manga Studio EX, you can also set your output range. You can either have the entire page printed, which means everything all the way to the edge, the offset of the crop mark, so if you had like your print guide settings and you had a bleed area set up, this would export up to the edge of the bleed or inside a crop mark, which would export to the finish frame or the final physical edge of the paper. You can choose your expression color, RGB, gray, duotone, or auto detect your color depth, your advanced color settings, setting your crop mark, setting your, your tone settings and whether or not you want them exported or printed in this case as grays or as screen tones. And finally, you can set how to process the page when scaling, illustration or comic, and whether you want a fast or a quality rasterization. And when you're happy with the settings, click on Execute Print, which is the same as going to the main menu and selecting File Print. And from this point, the settings are going to depend on the printer you're using and the operating system you're running, so I'll leave that part to you. And so that pretty much covers how to export and print in Manga Studio. For longtime users of the program, you can see how the process has changed as well as see how many new options we have available compared to version 5.0. And for you new users, hopefully this video will help clear up why my previous tutorial doesn't quite match up with how the program works now. Now wherever you are on the user spectrum, I hope this update helped you discover the various ways you can get your finished work out to be discovered by the rest of the world. So that's going to do it for this video, which was brought to you by Patreon subscribers like the ones you see here. Thank you so much for your help. If you'd like to support the Manga Studio Guide and help me keep these videos free for everyone forever, you can subscribe for as little as a penny per video on Patreon, or you can purchase page templates, rulers, guidebooks, or just throw some money in my tip jar on my Shopify site. Thank you for your support and for watching this episode, and I'll see you next time.